Hi, I'm Vince Anderson, and I'm going to talk a little bit about packing for a day of going ice climbing. And uh, talk a little bit about the equipment that I'm going to use and how I pack it up and pack and get ready to go. As you can see, I've got it all laid out here. Everything except for what I'll be wearing. And I like to get everything ready beforehand and get it all packed up and set so when I arrive at the crag, ice climbing area, wherever the approach is, uh, I'm ready to go and I'm not the, the person there that has to get all my stuff ready to go and maybe somebody else pulls up in their car and they're ready and they get ahead of me. So I want to be ready when I get there. I get everything organized at home and packed up before I go to the extent that I can. Well first let me talk a little bit about what equipment I'm going to bring. It's going to vary on any ice climb depending on if it's mixed or hard ice or long or short or if you have to carry stuff over or not but this is just kind of a typical day for a moderate to hard ice climb for me and um, so obviously I bring the rope and I'll, I'll split the gear up between myself and my partner and one common way to do it is since the rope's kind of big and bulky in of itself is give that to one person and the other person might carry the rest of the stuff um, I'll bring a an assortment of slings, carabiners, and uh, how many and what type. A little bit it's dictated by the uh, equipment I'm going to have, and since I'm climbing purely ice, just ice screws. And I'll bring, typically, um, I'll start with my anchoring materials, so at least one cordelette, sometimes two, and uh, one or two double length runners. I like to use those for anchors. I'm often using just two ice screws for the anchor. So a double length, even sometimes a single length runner will work well for that part of the equation. Of course I'll need some uh, free carabiners. So I bring about five. That tends to do the job for most uh, days out on the ice. And then the locking carabiners. I like to have my uh, belay rig set up here. So you can see I have a guide ATC or a plaquette style belay device. So I've got the amount of carabiners I need to work with that. As well, I'm going to take uh, three or four extra lockers for assembling the anchor, clipping other things myself too securely. And um, if I were to drop this whole rig, these three would easily take the place in, in doing the belaying and propelling that I would need to do with that. Uh, then I bring enough material to protect the climb while I'm leading. Generally with ice, I'm going to use short quick draws. It takes a little while to get the ice screws in. I've got gloved hands. I don't like fumbling too much. And there's a lot less friction in the rope drag. So these shorter quick draws can work really well. You just want to make sure, it's nice to have these smaller carabiners, but make sure that you can manipulate them well enough with the gloved hand. So I typically bring uh, five or six of those. Depends on how many ice screws I think I'll place. And uh, five or six of the shoulder length runners as well. So that leaves me with about 10 to 12 protection sling material and then the rest for uh, the anchoring. Well, let's talk a little bit about the protection I'm going to bring too. That to a certain extent dictates how much of this I bring along with me. Um, I tend to bring this black diamond ice screw kit holds 10 ice screws and I find that's about how many I usually end up going with. And so I bring an assortment of sizes. It's a little er it's early season right now, so I'll bring uh, I brought two or three of these shorter ones. Uh, but I always bring a couple of these longer ones. These are nice especially if you have to make a V thread to uh, retreat. So I've got a couple of those long ones, and then the rest are just the general medium length ice screws. Ten works well. It might not leave you with a whole lot to protect the, the climb with if you're going to be placing two at an anchor. And you can do the math. If you have two at one anchor and two at the anchor above, that's four of yours, so that leaves you six to protect the pitch with. That's not a whole lot, but it's enough for a lot of things. If it's a harder climb, I might bring as many as 12 to 14 ice screws. 
16 starts getting to be quite a bit. I, I find that if, if you find that you need 16 or more ice screws, you might want to consider scaling it back a bit to get on a route that you're more comfortable doing with less, just because of the nature of uh, what it takes to put those in and, and the added security uh, that's gained is sometimes uh, not, not as much as you might think. If you just scale it back to within your ability range, it's often a better plan of action. So I get the uh, ice screws ready to go, assuming I don't need any other rock or uh, rock protection, which I don't for tomorrow's climb. Roll this sucker up. Even if you don't use one of these bags, it's nice to put them into some kind of a bag or have them sheathed so that they, A, protect the threads and the cutting teeth of the screws, and B, it doesn't poke holes in your pack. Since this is one of the heaviest things, if not the heaviest and bulkiest, and one of the last things I'm going to need to get when I get to the climb, I, I put it at the bottom. Put the pack get in there, put these in there next to them. And like so, and then start getting the rest of the things in there. I typically will bring two packs for cragging because uh, I don't like to climb with a big pack. I like to climb with something smaller, and this will hold my water and uh, belay jacket in it while I'm climbing, or food and food as well, and other things, maybe knife and the uh, Abolikov bee thread maker, things, things of that nature can go into here while I'm climbing. And so I bring this in addition to the, to the larger pack. But I'll put that in in a moment. So I'll bring uh, a couple things of water. I like to bring a thermos. It's nice to have a hot tea up there or whatever it is you like, a hot beverage. Some other water to go along with that. I, I usually bring something with some powder in it, uh, some carbohydrates, because I find in the winter it's hard to get enough um, calories on board while you're out there. You just don't tend to want to eat as much. So if I put it in the water, I'll get a little more. So get those things in there. Then other heavier items that might, and, and bulky things that need to go into the pack. I, I bring a satellite phone with me if I'm in remote areas where I don't get cell phone coverage. I like to have some way of communicating if there was an emergency, uh, particularly if I'm just out cragging, I'm not on an alpine route or anything like that. So I'll put that in there. I've got it kind of wrapped up and protected because they're expensive and a little bit fragile. Um, some places people will use radios, and some places the cell phone works just fine. I bring a bivy sack too, once again, just in case there's an accident. It's cold out there. Someone has to stay for a while. Um, besides the insulation that they have available, you want to get them wrapped up as well as you can if you have to go for help. I'm stuffing that way down in there. Got my belay jacket that's going to go into the, the pack when I'm climbing and come out when I'm belaying. Stuff that down in the pack. Um, I bring extra gloves. I'll be wearing some while I'm going up there, but it's always a good idea to have an extra pair because, believe me, they will get wet. Sometimes you want two extra pair. I'm just going to bring one tomorrow. First aid. Uh, this is something I keep it in a harder case because it tends to get smashed and bashed and all the stuff in there gets broken and you have to replace it if you just put it in a Ziploc. That'll work too. Uh, that's just how I roll because I, I use it often enough. But I, I put it in something small enough that it can also go into the into the small pack that I'll be climbing with. So I get that in there. And the rest of the small things we're going to put mostly in the top, things that I might want accessible, uh, a little more easily accessible. So then I can get the, the day pack into there. My harness, that will go into there. And then my helmet, put this into there. Now I'm doing pretty well so far. And this pack's going to be a lot more comfortable to hike in to the crag, leave it at the base, and then uh, retrieve, retrieve it at the end of the day. I bring a trekking pole often for hiking in and slippery slopes. I like these smaller kind that can uh, collapse quite little. And I'll often bring something like this in my climbing pack if I get to the top and have to walk down I want the assistance of a pole coming down. But I'll probably just keep that out because I'll use it for walking into the ice climb. Then in the top we've got the food. Once again,
again, like I said, it's hard to get enough food because often it's hard to drink enough to eat with it. So bring as much as you think you realistically can uh, can eat. For me, sandwich, some chocolate. Um, I love goo and that kind of stuff. I put them in these flasks ready to go. I put a little water in there so it's uh, a little less viscous in the cold. And then some other uh, energy products to go in there. Lighter, once again, more of an emergency type deal. If, if, you're, uh, if, if I get stuck out overnight, most places I'm going ice climbing in uh, North America, there's some trees around. I'm going to make a fire. I'm not going to get cold. I'm going to stay warm out there. Bring some tissue if you have, the, uh, have to heed the call of nature. Nice to have something like that with you. Um, and then maybe some accessory cord if you need some uh, as well often repair kits with the sorts of things that would uh, be able to repair the products that you have I always bring a little sunscreen here I live here in Colorado so typically we're gonna get sun somewhere on the walk out sunglasses as well pocket warmers uh, neck gaiter, balaclava, these things for the weight are really worth it. You get cold, put this thing on, it's really going to help you stay warm. And then, of course, a headlamp, even if you're not planning on using it. They're so small, they're so light these days, there's no excuse for not bringing it. And believe me, in the wintertime, it's pretty easy to find yourself out a little later than you planned on. Get that all packaged up. Crampons on the outside. If you don't have room for them on the inside, room for them on the inside. If you do, that's fine. Strap them on there. And the dry sacks is on the pack. And it should, if you packed it right, with the heavier stuff like I did on the bottom, lighter stuff towards the top, it should carry a little nicer, and you should avoid having dead spots in the middle of the pack with whether it's 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 air in there it doesn't carry so well and that's more or less how I have it if I had to if we're bringing a couple ropes this I'd easily be able to strap this over the top put the sides of the rope into the side straps of the pack I could put this on the side but more than likely I'll be carrying it with me so that's more or less all I'm going to pack for an average day out cragging on the ice.